This is the second in the series entitled How Do We Come Closer as Women? Two very different women discuss it. In this case, it's Nandita and Susan, two extraordinarily different women from different parts of the world. Nadita reveals what happened when she discovered how human beings love to decide who the other is and distinguish themselves from the other. And Susan describes the moment when she'd completely lost it and got sick of being ignored and did a deal with other powerful women to recognise each other's voices. I think you're going to enjoy this one. I watched your film last night, oh. Fire. I've wanted to see it forever. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, did that film change you? Did that change how you saw yourself in the world? Did it change how the world saw you? Yeah, well, this was 25 years ago. Um, so at that time, there wasn't even a vocabulary, especially in the Indian languages, but even in English, it wasn't as colloquial as it is to say lesbians or gay or transgender or this thing of LGBTQ, A plus, et cetera. At that time, it was this one word, homosexuality. And uh, that two people were very hesitant to talk about it. So when I read the script, I found it very powerful and I did the film. It was not so much doing of the film, but it was all the conversations that happened after you know, whether by journalists or audiences. And it was a range of reactions from people saying, wow, what a bold film. And, you know, is it really the time for such a film? Is it too ahead of its times? To people sort of stopping me and saying, well, your performance was okay, but you know, this, this is a, a terrible film because it's going to make all women lesbians. Is that your agenda? So everything in between as well, you know. So it was a it was it was my growth for sure because in just answering those questions, I realized what a deeply prejudiced and a hypocritical society we live in, where there are so many double standards, where there's so much discomfort with reality, where you don't mind being violent, but you are scared of two people loving. Or there is so much right. fear of the unknown, because when you don't talk about it, it remains this you know, unknown entity and everybody has their own perception. You know, by default, I became a champion of the cause. And um, I think my own choices thereafter, whether in films or in work or in life, I think I became much more sensitive in understanding how we create the other, anything that's different from ourselves in terms of how we think or how we behave or who we want to be or who we want to love. Right. If right. there's something that's different, then we have judgment and, you know, we have a certain view that we want to impose on the other. But it's also deeply personal because yes. in that film, you could not have gone there unless you internally uh, uh, were, were unafraid. Right. But, you know, like when people would ask me after that, that were you uncomfortable doing that role? Was it, it must have been so difficult. And when they would say that, they often meant that, playing a lesbian or playing a woman who has same-sex love must be so difficult. But yeah. actually the character of Sita was very much like myself. You know, I was 25, I was, a re was rebellious, I was constantly questioning. I'm still very impulsive and spontaneous and um, all of those, you know, the intrinsic qualities that Sita had were very much like how I am. So for me, actually, it wasn't a difficult role. Uh, the same director, Deepa Mehta, she made another film called Earth about partition, yes. India-Pakistan partition. It was a trilogy, Fire, Earth and Water. And in Earth, I play this woman who is sort of kind of, you know, a little bit sort of sensuous and likes the attention of men. And she has this relationship with a man. And often it was compared after that, that oh, playing Sita in Fire must have been so much more difficult than playing Shanta in Earth. And I would say actually just the opposite. Yeah. I was so much more like Sita, but it was because they had the preconceived notion of thinking as if you know a lesbian is a particular kind of a person, as if you have some different sets of emotions mm -hmm. and different responses. I don't think you actually make real change unless you, you have an, uh, you're vulnerable. And I'm just curious why women are more hardwired to do that, have that capacity. Well, I 
if they are hardwired to do it, I think because they don't, they're not so entitled, they don't get everything as part of um, a given, they have to struggle for it, they have to find their ways, uh, they have to negotiate with their circumstances, they need allies, sometimes they are lone riders, all of that process, you know, all of those difficulties um, also make us who we are. And through all of that, there is, therefore, we are probably more vulnerable and we know we are more accepting of those vulnerabilities. We are more accepting of the fact that I'm not perfect. I mean, sometimes we go the other way and we feel like we are so imperfect and we yeah. all go through those points of doubts and, you know, am I, am I good enough? Right. And, and as we progress, I think the, the patriarchal or the sexist attitudes are more camouflaged they are more sort of subtle and that's mm. where they are also more difficult to combat. They're more Absolutely. difficult to fight because you don't know how to do it. Because if you say it out loud, it just sounds like, oh, you're just sort of a flag flying feminist or you're right. being very touchy or, you know, or every petty. minute. Yeah. Or what? Or petty. Or right. petty. So yeah, exactly. Making petty. a big deal about everything. Right. Yeah. You're making such a big deal about everything. Can't you take things lightly? And I didn't even mean it like that. It's all in your head. Right. All of those kind of things are thrown at you. So, you know, we are constantly, I think, negotiating through our circumstances. Even the best of us are always struggling with the perceptions of others. And, and if we can be empathetic and if we can perceive them more kindly, maybe we'll perceive ourselves more kindly and of course, vice versa. Right. Oh, I think that's inevitable. I mean, you can't treat anybody any better than you treat yourself. Yeah. Right? I'm struggling you know, with that sometimes. I realize that I'm so hard on myself and yeah. that also makes me hard on others, you know, in of terms of expectations and perfections and why is this not done right? And, you know, I'm slowly learning to sort of give up that slightly righteous self of you know doing right. everything right and being punctual and um, doing it in the way that I have imagined in my head and all of that. So, you know, it, yeah. It, it's very interesting that um, I think that it's a really a, an important concept that you are much harsher, one is much harsher on oneself than you mm. would tolerate your being to somebody else. So I will on occasion, I, you, they'll make you laugh. I like, well, really want to spend the next 20 years of my life having this conversation with myself. No, like I, I am done. I, I'm done being so critical of, of myself. So that's one okay. thing. And then the other thing is when I listen sometimes to the particularly harsh self-talk, I think, would you ever talk to somebody else that way? Would you find that tolerable exactly. or acceptable? Absolutely. So true. Why would you be so mean to yourself? If, if someone takes something from me, I don't, I don't keep a roster and say, oh, I did this for this person. But if somebody else does something for me, I feel very burdened and guilty. And I feel like, oh, I must give it back, you know? Right. So, and so a friend of mine said, you're not a good receiver. You know, you right. want to give, but, you know, learn to also enjoy receiving it. But yes, you kind of come from the world, which is also more male dominated, right? Engineering and technology and all of that, like MIT and our organizations. So do you sometimes feel like you're seeing your identity of a woman kind of is sort of takes precedence over your other identities? Like I realized about 10 or 15 years ago that I, I am in completely male dominated environments. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, have been because I'm I was a litigator, lawyer, uh, mm -hmm. uh, professionally, and that was completely male dominated. And so I've always been in that environment. And about 10, 15 years ago, I realized that um, you know, you you uh, take on what what comes at you, right? And you do that right. completely unconsciously. But it had gotten to a point where I resented terribly. Mm. Uh, not being taken more seriously. Yes. Um, and it just infuriated me. And so I went on a, a kind of a um, kind of a rant with other women so that we would mm -hmm. amplify each other. So that wow. when we were at a meeting and, and I would talk obsessively about this with mm -hmm. others, um, I 
And so when we were at a meeting and somebody appropriated my idea, took it as their own, and I was completely ignored, um, I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I rallied women and I looked for, you know, powerful women who I could rally. Nice, and yeah. Said, oh, Those you know, are the alliances we have to build. <laughs> I'm going to make a deal with you. Yes, when, I'm when, on. Without listening to it, I'm on. <laughs> yeah, when you speak... I am going to recognize you and I'm going to make sure the rest of the room recognizes you. And we, you. And we did it in sort of very, um, you know, very, I thought, great ways. Like I would say, oh, Nandita, I really liked what you said. I'm so glad Harry has taken up your idea. <laughs> You know, and it's and I think that it's very subtle. It made a really big difference. So that's one thing I wanted to say. The other thing that I realized, which I think is kind of more interesting. So what is my power? Um, my power is you know, I have a good enough mind. Uh, it's not extraordinary. It's good enough. No, it is extraordinary. Enough. Yeah, it's good <laughs> enough. But yes. the one capacity that I real I thought, you know, why does like why does this MIT community embrace me? Because mm -hmm. I'm not all mental and I'm not mental at that level. <laughs> you know, I'm just not. Uh, I'm honest. Mm. I'm not. And so why does this community embrace me and care about what I have to say? And it came to me uh, within the past several years. It's because I'm vulnerable and I'm human. And exactly. I talk, and I talk about the stuff that's actually going on in the room, and it is an opener for other people. And I, I, so it suddenly started Absolutely. to reframe for me, and I see that as a tremendous power, like mm. tremendous power. I'm Absolutely. smart enough, you know, good enough, exactly. that I can actually speak uh, <laughs> in a way that's unafraid and open and receptive. And when you can do that, it opens up everybody else. And that is enormously powerful. And, and that for me is a complete reframe. I was always, because I've lived in such a male world, I've always been afraid to um, claim that or name that or, you know, to be too female. And I'm so struck by how powerful that Absolutely. recognition yeah. and self-acceptance mm -hmm. uh, is. And it feels far more powerful than being a lawyer or knowing how to, you know, I know how to pick apart an argument. I definitely do. I'm skilled in yes. or to build an argument, but um, but my ability to read a room and then be honest about it, and I don't mean in a way to 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 just be honest. I it, it, you know it's not um, it's just to advance things, I, and that's really really powerful. And I wish women claimed that more. Uh, when you meet women from different cultures, whether it's Indian or African or whatever, is do right. you feel a different level of connection Absolutely. despite the cultural difference? Absolutely. And what is that connection? Why do you feel that? Could you put it in thoughts and words? Yeah. Put it in words. I wish that I could. And Nandita, I really, I really can't. Mm. It's something that happens below yeah. the surface, and it's a, absolutely. And, and it's, um, it's a feeling. It's an openness. It's a, it's a desire to connect with other, and, mm. um, and you know, you can feel it. I mean, you can feel that energy pouring off of somebody else and or that energy receptor opening in somebody else. And right. I do not feel that with mm. men. Mm. Um, right. I just don't. I love men, but I don't feel that. I, I don't feel that with men, period. 